Yo, what's going on? It's your boy Joe Alvarez. And today I just want to introduce you to Serato Studio Beta. If you know me, you know anything about me, you know that I love Serato products and particularly Serato Sample. I just think what they do over there is phenomenal. So this is going to be an overview, first impressions, review, hands-on experience. I actually downloaded this a couple of weeks ago, but I was away on travel and I just got back yesterday. So I'm all hands on deck and let's jump right in. So I won't lie. Initially, when I first heard about Serato Studio, I was a little confused, mainly because lately they've been making a lot of different moves within the DJ realm and the whole plug in realm with Serato samples. So I was just like, where is this going to go? just didn't really know where Serato Studio fit into the whole equation. But the more and more I read about it, the more and more I get it. And it's definitely a viable platform for producers, DJs who want to do quick things and not get into the whole learning curve of these expansive DAWs that are currently out there and who've been out there for a long time. So anyway, enough of that rant. Let's jump right into it. So when you first load up Serato Studio, this is what you get. You get a nice, big old expandable interface. It appears that your instruments, your samples, and your add drum window comes up right here. So you have a nice expansive window to see what you're doing. It's compatible with the Mac mouse, so you can scroll in, uh, zoom in, zoom out. And over here, it seems like they're calling it scenes. So you can add drums, add samples, add instruments. I'll go into later detail um, in, uh, later on in this video. And this is where I guess you can add all of your different sounds and play with that. Under here, it looks like these are your sequences. So you can name them whatever you want by double clicking. You can go to, uh, oh, that was pretty cool. So if you come under here, that'll be scene two. Hmm. Must be doing something wrong. Let's rename it. Let's delete that. Let's step back a second. See, I'm going to get too high. Oh, okay, so if you, if you just hover above this, you can copy. I guess what you're currently working on, or you can create a new empty one. That's pretty cool. And it lets you uh, categorize it the way you want. Down here, I guess this is where your Serato DJ library will live. If you had uh, your DJ setup, your different projects, you can see here, different the different drums. You have your one shots that come preloaded with Serato um, Studio. You have all your drum kits that you can load up from there. And you have your audio sample category, all the samples, all the audio loops. I'm not seeing a play feature where you can quickly preview this. Can't really. Uh, just deleted that. It's not bringing it back. So command Z. Oh, whatever. You have your effects that's categorized into audio, fader, crusher, delay, EQ, echo, flanger, uh, mastering, phaser, and reverbs. It's pretty cool. Then you have your instruments. Pardon me, pardon me. And I guess this is where all your instruments live, depending on how you categorize it. And then your plugins. So I'm going to assume everything is drag and drop. So in this case, if I wanted to drag and drop, say a clean 909 drum kit, it'll automatically load it here. Cool. I really like the way this pad set up. This is very reminiscent of Serato Sample. And what I like that you can do is you're able to hit the keyboard, say if you're working on a plane or something, and you don't have access to your actual musical keyboard, you can hit the actual laptop keyboard. So the sounds don't sound bad. That sounds pretty good, actually. 
See what the boom back kit sounds like. Uh, sounds pretty clean to me. All right, so just at first glance, it seems pretty easy to um, navigate. Again, I haven't used this program extensively, but I'm, uh, I see it's pretty intuitive just by the nature of what is Serato products. Um, just actually, let's further expand a little bit on top here. So up here, you have your BPMs. You can set up here what tempo you want to be at. Just double click. Say, let's go 105 for now. You can set the key. Now, I'm not sure if that's going to make it universal or is that just like a, a template just to let you know the key that you're in. And you have your effects. That's pretty cool. So the effects come down here so you can see the different effects that you have. You have a ton of effects. That's pretty cool. Then you have your mix. So you can actually see your mix in between here of the different elements. I like how it changes here according to where you're clicking. Then you have down here, you look at this is the turn on the metronome. That's your metronome. That's your turn quantize on and off. So I guess as you're recording, it's going to just quantize for you depending on how you set that. So if you come over here and you go 1 16th, that's what it's going to do. All right, so further over here, you have your play. Cool. I'm going to take that. That's record. So whatever you want to record, you got that right there. Okay, so automatically gives you that countdown. Um, and it's automatically set to overdub record. So you can just keep adding on. You have your different scenes and you have your scene size. It's pretty cool. So you got one and two and three and four. I'm taking it one and two is one and two bars, three and four bars. Uh, that's just my guess, but who knows? I could be wrong. And over here you have your little robot. Oh, that's pretty cool. So your robot is giving you different options to control the game, your EQs your effects, your time stretch, your volume, All right? And then you have your grid, which it seems like is gonna put the grid in, um, the double time. Oh, that's pretty cool right there. Real cool. You come here times two, you can have some like this. So it would be like 16th notes and 8th notes. Don't really see where you control it any further than that, but even then, that's still pretty cool. It's real fast, real quick and dirty, which is what I like. Um, boom. So that's all right. And then actually down here, you have your song view. So I'm taking it as you gather your different elements in your sequences, you can sequence everything to one main song. Zoom in, zoom out. And again, super intuitive. I just know if I click here, it's going to close that and bring up this section. So um, real friendly interface so far. Cool. So you know what? Let's try to make a beat. I'm going to just try to make a beat by... Then what I'm just going to do is two bars for now. Make a little old school hip hop or something. That's cool. And if you just, dump, if you just click on that note, it's going to just take it away. Let's try to record that. 
Turn that down a little bit. Yeah, that sounded kind of weird. Let's do that again. Cool. Let's give it a little effect. Just turn that down. sounds and I will duplicate that on top of that not duplicate stack it okay so this is really the moment I've been waiting for I want to be able to see if I can add a sample to this bad boy I'm a big fan of Serato sample so I'm 99.9% .9 sure this is the same exact elements that are going to be in this program. So let's press add sample. Oh, that's pretty cool. And it automatically takes me to the all sample loops that it comes available with. So again, I wish I can preview the sounds because I really don't know what any of these things sound like. I don't see a way to do that. I might be missing this, but so far that's my only strike. I would say, let's be able to preview the sounds within this uh, tab section so I don't have to click and drag each time just to hear it. So let's go to the late 80s, see what that sounds like. Uh, that sounds cool, but not, not what I'm going for. Samurai plug. All right. That sounds pretty cool. That's pretty cool, actually. If you look closely. You see that it's automatically syncing everything up. It's going to sync to the host. And it's also going to let me know the original BPM that it's in. It's 78. And it's A minor. And that's pretty cool. So if you turn off the sync here, you'll be able to manipulate the key over here. That's, that's real cool. So this this very reminiscent of Serato sample. Um, let's see if I can just set slicer and let's go to one. Uh, not what I wanted. What if you want to find a sample? Okay, so huh, how do you erase the cue point? Okay, so you just click on the pad and then press delete. And you can manually, I guess, just go in, say, well, hit one, come here and do two. Three, four, and then 
cool. So I automatically recognize this from Serato sample. So once you have your cue point set, you can determine how long you want to be able to play this. And in this case, just want to go almost to the end. And then up here, you can just play it as you trigger it and it will just hold down until you let it go. Or you can play the whole um, cue point from in and out point. That's pretty cool. So you can monitor the volume of each pad via this fader or the whole instrument via here, which is to me super dope. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. Just gonna go ahead and hit record. Let's see if we slow that down a little bit by coming down here to half speed, which will keep everything in sync if you keep this enabled. <laughs> Sounds pretty cool. All right, let's play around what an add instrument, see what that does. All right, so it'll take me over here. See, I want to go for a bass sound. Let's go with that 808 head explosion. That's pretty cool. So if you press play and key, Show the keys here. I guess this would be just trying to figure out what are the notes because there's no such thing as a W or a T or Y or U note. So Guess this would be You can see it up here. It'd be kind of cool if instead of labeling it according to the actual keyboard mapping of the computer, but like the actual musical keyboard, similar to here. I know Logic does that. Instead of calling it the actual keys, I'm pretty sure they um, label it actual um, musical keys. So, because it's kind of hard to figure out.
Uh, let's see what that does. That doesn't sound too bad. I mean, I'm just kind of just guessing what it might be. Um, but it actually sounds pretty cool. Let's see if we can use a different bass sound just so it doesn't sound so boomy. Cool. So let's try to... Not really sure. Can you select it and then huh, how do I go down a one octave? Yeah, that sounds crazy. Just select it and then redo it. Something like that. All right, so honestly, I ain't even gonna lie. I'm kind of almost getting lost in trying to make a beat, which I didn't really intend to do. But I can speak for the fact that because it feels like it's so easy to do that you just want to make a beat. And so there you have it. <laughs> Let's see. So I've added drums. I've added samples, instruments. I'm pretty sure you can add your own sounds to it. Let's say add a sample and I go to splice real quick. Come on. Take that sound and set slicer. And let's change the key to A minor. Something sounds off to me. Saying it's an A minor sample, but uh, who knows? Anyway, I mean, so far, this thing seems pretty solid. It's It seems very to the point, and it's not trying to do too much. It's doing what Serato is good at, and that's time and pitch, the quickness of the cue points, very efficient, um, the, the, the world famous waveforms and how you can scroll through your samples really quickly. And again, it just seems like a good dose of if you really just want to do a quick, dirty production and get your ideas out there, this has that feel and that vibe to it. But if you're a seasoned producer, you can get your hands really deep into this program and really take it as far as you can. In regards to saving, right now I'm trying this out on my laptop as well, so I have save disabled, but I noticed earlier that it didn't have a lot of options to save um, in a flexible manner, uh, for lack of better terms, meaning can export the whole song, I can save with the projects, I can save project ads, but I, I didn't really see where I can save separate waveforms so I can, say if I do a whole sequence or a whole song, I can actually have my different stems and my and say if I want to 
each individual sound on a separate track. I didn't see that option. Maybe it's coming. Maybe I'm missing it. This is the beta after all. Um, and then in regards to options, it's really not that much beside adding new scenes, duplicating uh, select scenes. And it's just really keeping it focused, simple, and right to the point. And just on my first impression and just being able to manipulate the sound the way um, I need to just by being able to drag and drop different sounds and samples, to the pads and the windows. It just works. I'm really excited to see what they have in store. It seems like this thing can be, really be big. And now that Serato sample, now the Serato studio is getting their hands into the game of production. I'm really excited to see what's going to go on from here. So if you like my video, I appreciate a comment. Hit me up, subscribe. Appreciate ya. Peace.